It's Friday night, and you know what that means. You've got to give the people what they want. I'm John Renton with my review AEW Rampage. Before I get into the review, one quick note in regards to next week's review, since it's taking place on Christmas night. Because of my work situation, yes, I work during the holidays. That's okay. That sweet, sweet dollar is always good. I'm either going to watch it live, and that review will be up a little bit later that night, or it'll be up early on Sunday. There you go. Anyway, it's a good thing this show is only an hour long, because while not the worst hour of television that I've seen, a lot of it blended together, and I didn't think it was all that good. So Excalibur, Taz, and Ricky Starks are on commentary. Super fish and clicks, as I'm calling them. Thank you very much to one particular viewer for suggesting that. I'm sorry I didn't write your name down, but thank you very much. Bobby Fish and the super click, the super elite, you know, uh, Adam Cole, baby, and the not-so-young bucks. Taking on the best Rocky friends. Wheeler Yuta was in the corner. It's Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta. Trent already feels like an afterthought, and he just returned. Rocky Romero and Orange Cassidy. Hey, it's another Bucks match with the same usual Orange Cassidy stuff. And look, I know there are fans of them. That's fine. I'm not saying it's the worst thing I've seen, but it blended together. It was an ape man. It was just, it was just there. It was just there. It was just, <clears throat> at times, comedic. It went a while. They did do the whole, you've got to give the people what they want. Once during the match and once after the match. And we get a Super Falcon Arrow, but Orange Cassidy breaks that up. And then we get Dives of Plenty. And we get Strong Zero, one, two, three. Bobby Fish taking the pin. What? God, Bobby Fish has felt like just a guy that's just there to eat pins. But then again, Bobby Fish, he's a fine worker. He's just not interesting at all, so it makes sense. And, of course, you've got to give the people what they want. So then, uh, Dan Lambert, the sheepish lion, Dan Lambert, is back. I don't know why he's back. Nothing against him in particular. He is a passionate wrestling fan, has a tremendous belt collection, and... Clearly does love being out there in front of the crowd and getting to do this, but he's just channeling every AEW critic. You know, he's there with the men of the year, uh, you know, Ethan and Scorpio Sky. <clears throat> and he knocks Tony Khan, says, you know, he said it was going to be about French, not friendship or politics. He pushed the pockets guy, he pushed the skateboard guy and all that. And he was giving you what you wanted while stabbing you in the back. It's nothing against Lambert, but he got beat in a 10 on 10 tag and he's back within a month. And he's doing this stuff with Ethan and Scorpio. Are they going to bring other MMA people in? Paige Van Zandt actually, I think, would have been just fine because she never got beat. She can make a fine. If she wanted to make the transition to wrestling, I think she would do just fine. Um, he then uh, says it's turning the late 90s WCW. There are sometimes uh, some aspects of it where he's correct. Other aspects where I don't think he's correct. Um, and this is coming from me that's been very critical of AEW and has gotten a lot of shit for it. And then he mentions, oh, Cody, you know, one of the EVPs gets a title shot and everything. And here's Cody. And they got Dan Lambert who's getting booed and Cody was getting booed. They will not cheer Cody. Cody is not going to fucking listen. He won't turn heel, even though his stupid twat wife makes him a heel because she's stupid and a twat and should not be on television. There's my lone shot at Brandy for the month. Um, Cody is just... Not this is not going to work. He tries to, they try to do mic fighting and everything. Take the mic back, take the mic back. No, I want the mic. No, I want the mic. No, I want the mic. And then uh, Dustin comes down to help a uh, two-on-one beat down. Sammy then comes uh, help even the odds. And that's it because Sammy Guevara and Cody are going to have a match on uh, the holiday bash of Rampage. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's pretty much what we got there. So that was about the first 30 minutes. And then we get TBS tourney pre-tape with... Uh, Thunder Rosa, Jade, uh, Ruby, and Nyla all cutting quick promos about their respective matches that they're going to have. Rosa and Jade, and uh, Ruby and Nyla. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, and then we get Penelope already in the ring, and the bunny hopping around that ringside. And we get uh, Penelope with the money taking on uh, Ty Conte with Anna Jay. It's a submissive match. I think I read that right. Look, Penelope has improved in the ring, and I think does a nice, you know, uh, mood lock variation, and ties certainly not bad in the ring. This didn't work at all. Now, some of the submissions were fine, but this was rushed, really rushed. Some of it was sloppy, and I'm not saying that's the, the fault of the women, but it just, it was just there. It didn't work, and we get uh, Ty violently scissoring um, uh, Penelope to get the victory, and then the bunny clocks her, so the feud's continuing. Seriously. I, I, if I'm going to knock WWE and New Japan for running fusion into the ground, seriously, this is fucking ridiculous. I don't mind giving the women something to do. The bunny is not good in the ring. Penelope has improved, 
but this was not a very good match and a good way to showcase her. Ty Conte, you're getting what you're going to get with her, even though she has improved in the ring. And Anna Jay was also there in this segment. Why is this continuing? How many more women are we going to get? Are we just going to take all, you know, like the women that we featured on Dark, Ryo Musunami, Emi Sakura, Ryo, and Mei Saruga, are we just going to put them all in a goddamn melting pot, human centipede them together, make an eight-woman tag? God, I just cursed it, didn't I? Watch that happen on the <clears throat> last Dynamite or Rampage of the year. So, um, anyway, we get an Owen Hart tournament update on uh, Dynamite. So the Owen Hart Cup, that I believe the finals are going to take place at Double or Nothing. That's nice that um, they're honoring Owen Hart's uh, memory, and that's good. Hopefully, they announce some people, and we get, you know, some stuff like, you know, stuff's going to be donated to the Owen Hart Foundation, whatever it is. It's really good that they're, you know, doing this with Owen, or with Martha, in honor of Owen. Next week, by the way, Cole versus Cassidy. Oh, boy. Um, Nyla, or Malachi, rather, versus Griff Garrison. Uh, Christmas Party with Britt and Shivani, Ruby versus Nyla, <coughs> FTR and MJF versus Darby, Sting, and Punk. Darby may want to pick his battles a little bit better and not go after somebody that has a skateboard gimmick, if you know what I mean. Um, and Xmas Day Rampage. Oh no, it's going to be Bear Bronson versus Hook. How will Hook do against a bear? Maybe he'll be able to Hook him. Okay, I'm done with that. Except I'm going to do the Hook thing a lot. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he does against a bigger guy. Sammy versus Cody. Battle of the Belts on January 8th. It's apparently going to be on TNT. Okay, I'll watch it. That's cool. I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's going to be like one of the four Clash of Champions style events. Uh, Britt versus Rio for the AEW Women's Championship with more stuff to be announced. And then we get Eddie, Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz, and Lucha Bros with Alex Abrahantos versus 2.0, Garcia, and the Acclaimed. Okay, so we get one line from Caster's Rap. We like the CIA... Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, with you, like, the CIA and JFK, he barely gets that line out. Oh, Jesus, because they rushed the ring. And all this was, was just a mess. It was just a mess with a bunch of guys doing a bunch of shit. That's all it was. Um, I haven't seen, you know, action like this since the first match, where it's just a bunch of men doing stuff. Um, we get a quick roll-up at the end, and Garcia pins Kingston. And then we get a beatdown, where they hit the moonbox into, uh, you know, Kingston's head, Right as Jurassic Express's music hits, I don't know if that was badly timed or what it was, and um, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and Christian Cage is apparently the de facto manager, but he's definitely an upgrade for Marco Stunt, who hopefully will never be anywhere near a wrestling promotion again. We get a beat down, uh, you know, we get a fracas and everything, and Jungle Boy's holding the tag title. Oh no, we're going to get uh, Jurassic Express versus Lucha Bros at Battle of the Belts, and Cage is going to turn on them. Why? Because that's what Christian Cage does. Watch it happen. Yeah, Rampage was fine. Anyway, so yeah, let's see what happens next week on Rampage. So if you don't see my review for, you know, until the next day, that's why. So agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.